Hello, thanks so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, and this is our seventh installment of this virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. It's been such a great way to stay connected with artists in a pandemic when we can't all gather in person together. And right now I'm connected with Jeremy Warden from Double Grave. We're going to hear some new songs from Double Grave and also chat about what Jeremy's been up to. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty well. Thanks for having me slash us on the show. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. You've put out, well, now two releases during the pandemic. I think only one was actually recorded during the pandemic, but I'm just so curious to know what that process has been like for artists in this very unusual time. So we'll have a lot to talk about, um, but yeah. let's get started with some music. Do you want to introduce your bandmates that we'll be seeing in these live performances? Yep, so this will be me and Bree, our bassist slash my partner. Um, and this first song is called Slime. All right, it's Double Grave here on Sounds Like Home. If you're just tuning in, this is Sounds Like Home, our virtual showcase of Minnesota music. And that was Double Grave performing the song Slime. Double Grave have put out two releases now in this pandemic time. Uh, Goodbye Nowhere came out back in August of 2020. Chrysanthemum just came out this month. And Jeremy, if I'm understanding this correctly, Chrysanthemum is actually the one that was recorded during the pandemic, right? 
Uh, correct. Yeah, we recorded that. Um, we recorded part of it right up until the first shelter in place ordinance was issued in the state and then f like finished it the, uh, the weeks following from a distance. We were originally doing it in our drummer's basement together. But then it became okay. a sort of quarantine distance recording project to finish it up. Oh, interesting. What is it like to record a part and then mix together later? What differences did you notice? Um, well, the biggest difference was that usually our drummer, Seth, does all of the engineering and mixing and um, Brie and I just perform. Um, but this time we took on more of the actual um, technical work, for lack of a better term, our, on our own. And it was a really big learning process for me in particular to actually figure out how to do that side of it instead of just relying on stuff to do everything. <laughs> just a lot of back and forth, but we had a lot of downtime yeah. then. Yeah. I feel like everyone's going to come out of this pandemic so good at setting up their own mics and knowing how to zoom. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to have this like whole new skill set. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to level up on the um, audio quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was interested to see that um, Goodbye Nowhere, the record that you put out last summer, was actually recorded pre pandemic, but also mm -hmm. in somewhat of an isolation, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. It was definitely written in in isolation, and then um, where I was, I was living alone and just working on writing the whole thing, and then we recorded it um, sort of in a more fractured way than we had worked before. Kind of throughout the whole first half of 2019, we recorded it um, in in this same house, um, but we had to take a lot of pauses for touring with other bands or different life stuff. And we were doing it all on our own in a way that we hadn't really done before. So kind of, kind of took a long time and lots of uh, learning curves along the way. So what was it like for you to release it during the pandemic? Then it came out uh, August 7th of 2020. Uh, it was, it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got back from tour from like a month long tour at the end of February in 2020 and which we're like really grateful to have squeezed that in in the last minute. Um, but then we were planning on, you know, just being on the road all year and just like working on performing these songs and like getting the word out there. And that's like the main way that our band functions is like as a live band playing shows around the country and whatnot. And so um, it was pretty difficult to like redirect that energy and find ways that made sense for us to still feel like us while trying to get the word out, um, which is kind of how Chrysanthemum came to be because we had all this pent up energy that we were ready to expel on Goodbye Nowhere, but then we couldn't really do anything. So we're like, oh, let's record this other thing. Um, and we turned it into a um, bonus CD for some of the Goodbye Nowhere pre-orders as like, this is something that we can still do to help promote is just keep creating in our own way. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear another song from uh, the Goodbye Nowhere release, NNN. What does that stand for? Um, it stands for... No one, nothing, nowhere. <laughs> I sometimes I feel like I get the order mixed up, but it, it's a lyric in the song. <laughs> okay, this is Double Grave performing here on Sounds Like Home.
If you're just tuning in, this is Sounds Like Home. That was Double Grave performing another song from Goodbye Nowhere, NNN. Goodbye Nowhere came out in August of 2020, and there is a new release, Chrysanthemum. I always trip up that word a little bit, <laughs> out this month on Bandcamp. And I'm just curious to know more on you know a human level, like what has the last year been like for you? to go from being out, you know, playing so many shows, being on the road to suddenly having to be at home all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty difficult at first, for sure. You know, as a band, we've sort of like structured our lives around the band plans, you know, and, you know, planning stuff like several months out in advance and sort of bending around that. Um, like we had planned to be on tour for like several months last summer and fall. Um, but when everything got shut down, it was almost like we went, we, we made Chrysanthemum. And then after that, it's like, we don't really have anything else to work on right now. And so we kind of just went on hiatus for most of the year and let Goodbye Nowhere kind of come out. And um, it's almost like it bought us time to do our own thing because here we had this big release to stand behind, but like from day to day, we weren't really doing any band stuff. And so we've all just sort of like practiced when we could, um, but been pursuing like other personal things. Um, our bassist Bree went back to school and like we got new jobs that weren't <laughs> tied to the service industry and whatnot. And just kind of like had to keep keep surviving and find ways to uh, create when we could. And now we're getting back into um, actually like writing and practicing a little bit more regularly um, as so many things are sort of blooming again. Um, yeah. Now that we've gone through so many personal changes, we're fitting the band back into our life. <laughs> yeah, I'm always curious to know if artists can continue to create through this time or sometimes you like you say enter just survival mode you know you're just mm -hmm. making ends meet and trying to make it work or um, sometimes just completely overwhelmed by you know the events of the day this has just been such an overstimulating time to be a human being have you found yourself drawn to write or create during this time um i've i felt very um good like at the beginning of the lockdown when it felt like it was maybe going to be short-lived 
or whatever. Um, I was like, I really got to utilize this time to practice every day and uh, write as much as I could. And um, basically after George Floyd was killed, it was like, forget all of that. And then the summer was what it was. And like I said, we were just sort of like letting the band go on autopilot while we did other things. And um, now it's sort of like sifting through all of the early stuff that um, we created at the beginning of lockdown when we were like sort of amped up from the tour and getting ready for the release and everything. Now we're uh, sifting through the drafts of that time and trying to make something new. It's sort of how it feels from my end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so intriguing and also overwhelming to think, you know, now it's been a year um, since everything kind of ground to a halt. And I was interested to see, you know, that you chose this month to put out this recording that you finished a year ago. What's it mm -hmm. like for you to revisit kind of where you were at then versus where you are now? It's It's been interesting for sure. Um, I don't know. I, I felt really kind of optimistic at that time and I do again now. And it's almost like I didn't realize how bad things were going to get then and maybe I'm being naive again. Um, the whole like year later thing is just a real... Uh, a real trip to think about too much. Like, I feel like everyone's talking about the last show they went to or the last show they played or like the last social outing they had, like it's all coming around for everybody right now. And it's a very existential time, I think. But at the same time, like I actually finally know a lot of people who are, have been vaccinated, like family members and coworkers and whatnot. So it's like, oh, maybe things are getting better. <laughs> Yes, that does feel good. I just saw a statistic, one in four Americans have been vaccinated. That surprised wow. me that it's already that many. And it made me yeah. feel hopeful, cautious, cautiously hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you say, we're all a little traumatized by everything that's happened. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think there is a light at the end of the tunnel, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, thanks so much for being here today, chatting with me and recording these performances for us. It's so wonderful to have some way to stay connected even though we can't have you come into the studio or go to a, a show together or anything like that it's just nice to see people's faces and hear how you've been and everything so thanks so much jeremy for joining us for sounds like home yeah absolutely thank you for having us on the show all right we'll close with long drive home it's double grave performing here on sounds like home
Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, and this is our seventh installment of this virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. It's been such a great way to stay connected during the pandemic and to hear some new music. There has continued to be new music out of the Minnesota scene this year. Right now, I'm connected with Annie and the Bang Bang. They just put out a new record called Loveland. Hello, band. How are you doing today? Good. We're doing very well. Good. good to be here. Well, yeah, good to have you. Annie, could you introduce everyone in the Bang Bang? <laughs> well, my name is Annie. Um, this is Mike. Uh, backwards. Kari is right behind me. She plays bass. And that's John. He plays guitar, additional guitar. Great. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today about the new record and also uh, recording a release show that I got a chance to watch online, which is such an interesting and creative way to promote this release. So definitely need to talk about that. But we're going to start with a song that I love from this record called Good Dog. Is there anything you want to tell us about this song in particular? Um, I wrote the song for a show that I was doing with my friend, and it was about uh, a, a performer who was really um, kind of cruel and uh, the person who worked for them. So it's really about a, a sort of a sadomasochistic relationship, not sexually speaking, but emotionally speaking, and also about being numb and uh, not fully experiencing the world. Um, yeah. Well, it's a powerful one, and I love Annie's voice on this one as well. So we'll listen to a song, and then we'll chat a little bit more with Annie and the Bang Bang here on Sounds Like Home. I'm a good dog. My sings. I curl like a comma at your feet. Waiting for my turn 
If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota music. I'm Andrea Swenson, and that was Annie and the Bang Bang performing the song Good Dog from the new record Loveland, which just came out earlier this year. Annie and band, whoever would like to participate in this uh, question and answer, I'm curious if you could just tell me, you know, how long were you working on this record? When was it written? When was it recorded? I'll start. Um, we uh, go to this Airbnb in Loveland, Colorado when we tour there. And um, and we discovered there that we get a lot of work done when we have uh, isolated time together with nothing else happening. So we call them uh, band slumber parties. And the album, we've been working on the album for about two years. And most of it was uh, worked on in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, then we went to Cannon Falls to record with Brent Sigmuth. And we lived there for two weekends and someone else take over. <laughs> go, go, go. Um, yeah, the, the fun thing about uh, creating the album is, is when, like Annie said, when we've been on these tours, we end up with two or three days off between the weekends. And so I just bring out my little snare drum and little splash cymbal and shakers and stuff. And we just hang out and just uh, rehearse and, um, then uh, at Brent's, John, Kari, <laughs> somebody. I'm not sure what else to say. Um, yeah, we just spent two weekends kind of continuing the same idea of what we did in Loveland, except for recording it, just having a really good time. And, it, you know, since we don't have anything else to do, it just, it helps us be really creative and just be together and have fun in a way that I don't think we would if we had to go home each night and deal with whatever we had to deal with. So yeah, we just realized we really like that. And we keep trying to make experiences for ourselves that are like that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool that both the writing and the recording were in situations where you could kind of cut yourself off from the outside world and just be together as a band and live together and work together and all that good stuff. You must get along well personally for that to work for you. We do. <laughs> yeah. We get along quite well. Anyone want to argue that one? Yeah. <laughs> so was the album finished before the pandemic lockdown? Or was did this happen during lockdown? Uh yes. We uh in fact I think it was we we didn't just we put this one on vinyl. This is the first Annie the Bang Bang on vinyl, and that was we decided to do that, I think, mid pandemic yeah but we had recorded the whole album uh by the end of 2019 yeah so it was done in the fall oh. of 2019 yeah so we had it, oh, it was wow. already okay. yeah it was ready to go and then the pandemic hit and then we had time to think about things like like a release party yeah which <laughs> we ended up doing virtually right yeah yeah right yeah, that is so interesting, you know, to to make the choice of releasing it during lockdown when you know that you can't have a live event. I mean, what made you, I know some people decided to wait. Some people are like, no, let's just put this out. Like, how did you make that decision of when the right time was for you? Well, I think part of it was because we were being so prolific during the pandemic that we were starting to develop quite a backlog of material that we just kind of had to get it out the door so we could start <laughs> focusing on the newer stuff. And also, uh, I want to add to that, if that's okay. Uh, uh, we There was no reason for us to wait. So we didn't, before this, have like a following where everybody's like, we can't wait for that album. So this So it was more like, we have an opportunity to seize a moment and this is the moment we want to seize and a moment that we want to create together. And we all have, most of us have a background in theater. So we had connections at the Southern theater. We wanted to create something really beautiful and lasting and that sounded really beautiful and looked amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, and and yeah, and, and we were so excited about it and, and we didn't know how long the pandemic was going to last. So we just thought, we have to seize every opportunity we have and we have to create the opportunities that we don't have currently. So let's just continue to be artists and um, love each other and love the music we make together and celebrate it in some way because we're really proud of this album and, and, and uh, we love working together. Yeah. 
Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the actual production of the, it's not even a release show. It's like a concert film that you created to accompany this, but I want to hear some more music first, and then we'll get into that a little more. So the next song that you're going to perform is Shake the Shaker. Is there anything you want to say about this one? Yeah, that was one of the first ones that we really developed together. We wrote together in Loveland. I had a riff. John took the riff over and created this other thing with it. And then which uh, unleashed a sort of way of singing in the song that uh, was a way I haven't sung before and approach to it. And it's really about, it's kind of a um, you'll get yours kind of song um, written about some people who haven't been caught for doing bad things that they did um, and they will die because everybody does. So at least there's that. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Excellent, excellent introduction. <laughs> this is Shake the Shaker, Annie and the Bang Bang, performing for you here on Sounds Like Home.
That is Annie and the Bang Bang performing for you here on Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, connected with the full band right now to talk about their new album, Loveland, which was written in Loveland, Colorado, and then recorded here in Minnesota down in Cannon Falls at Pachyderm. So I want to get into some more of the details around the concert film that you made to accompany this album. And it's such a creative way to approach this idea of doing a virtual release show and we can't all gather at events. How did you decide to do something that would be kind of pre-recorded and like you said, kind of a lasting document of the band as well? Uh, one thing it was that we recorded at Little Big Studio, not Pachyderm, but it was with an I'm sorry. A, a, it, that's fine. Just wanted to correct that. Um, so we, when live streaming first began, I felt like I was in an aquarium watching and it felt like in an, being in an aquarium in, in terms of the sound, perspective of sound. And so I felt that I couldn't enter that sonic world in a way that made sense to me personally. Um, and so we decided we wanted to go somewhere and not do a live stream event, but have um, pick craft three separate sets that could also all the songs could speak to one another in a different way. We wanted each set to look different. And um, we wanted to have the luxury of being in a huge space so we could stay safe. Everyone could be masked. We picked uh, collaborators who we knew uh, believed in COVID and science and uh, a, a wonderful lighting designer, Karen Olson. Max Collyard was the main cinematographer. Um, Tom Herbers did sound for us. So we wanted to curate an event and um, I'm not being as articulate about this as I want it to be but we wanted to curate the sets so that we could deliver a theatrical experience and really trust that the sound and the lights were also supporting the performances themselves and were helping to shape the performance. So for instance, Karin's lighting in the second section where we're all in a circle, which felt more intimate than the other sets, um, was almost like a, um, like a fifth character in the room with us, I felt. And, um, mm. Yeah. Does anyone else want to add something to that or have anything else to say about it? Uh, I, I would just say that, you know, the theaters were all dark as well. So it was sort of the perfect opportunity to take advantage of, of that, you know, places the Southern, we probably wouldn't normally be able to take over for a weekend like that. So it was just, I mean, it's such a magical space. So it kind of was wonderful in a sense to, to be able to do that. That is such a stunning theater. It's such a great backdrop for any performance. What was it like to perform in an empty space or mostly empty along with the crew? It was it was really a strange thing. I mean, we've certainly been, you know, you play shows and, and people will have their cameras and you know the people are recording and all of that stuff. But but this this we we really we rehearsed each set and in a way um, including, you know, mapping out to who when do we change guitars and you know, when do we need to tune because each set is done in its entirety with with no edits and so there's a couple of little interstitial moments where john and i kind of flitter flitter around a little bit but um but it was it was a interesting for me to be really conscious of okay we're playing so it's very much like recording you want everything to be really really perfect which you always do but then we're also being filmed so we are also having to perform for the camera a little bit or not sometimes we were just like okay this is a little more presentational this one and 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 it was just a real heightened heightened blend of, of performance that was very interesting to me we're proud of it and i'll i'll, I'll yeah. add one more thing to that which is that with the cameras so the cameras themselves become the eye of the audience and so that was a way of connecting with audience so we literally had this feeling of wanting to reach out through space like reach across space and time in order to connect with people who weren't in the room yet but who would eventually be present with us um even if it's not in the real world yeah well it definitely worked i loved watching it and it felt so more immediate than some of the live streaming events. It's just so hard to break down that wall, like you were saying, or get out of the aquarium and make it feel like you're connecting with another person. So thank you for creating that 
document of this time and, and of your band and of, you know, this moment that we're all in together. Um, well, thank you so much as well for being part of Sounds Like Home. I'm just so glad that we could make this work. And I've been loving the new album, Loveland, which just came out earlier this year. We're going to have one more song that's actually brand new. So you mentioned that you're kind of already writing ahead and have new material. Can we expect another record in 2021? Yeah, probably two. Um, we just went down to Creation Studios um, and worked with Tom Herbers again to record a, an eight song uh, uh, album. And um, this song is called The Heavy Heads of Hyacinth. It's based on a riff that John had. It's one of the first riffs that we tried to share via voice memos once the pandemic hit. So it's a pandemically written song, the first one we did. And um, yeah, and it's about um, sort of being liberated from a, a, a troublesome relationship but where you can sort of weigh out the, the good and the difficult parts of that and um, come to a place of um, joy and understanding. Oh, well, musicians take note. You can now use the term pandemically written to describe the music <laughs> that you've created in the last year. Well, thank you so much, Annie and the Bang Bang. It's been wonderful to talk to you. And here they are performing for you on Sounds Like Home. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota Legacy Amendment and you 
Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, and this is our seventh installment of our virtual festival showcasing Minnesota music. I am so excited to be connected right now with Mark Malman. He has a new record coming out next month called Happiness. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm fairly happy. I would say uh, seven out of ten. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, I'm so happy to see your face and to be connected with you. And we're, we have a lot to talk about because you've got this new record coming out. That's kind of a continuation of the work that you've already started with your memoir. So I want to talk to you about that too. Um, but we'll start with the performance. This is a single that you released a few months back called We Are We. Is there anything you want to tell us about this song? Um, the album has two sides. It has happiness and sadness because it's about the totality of emotions and how do how I how I accessed happiness on the during the book tour um and so this song is about uh acknowledging that we're all one uh one sort of organism collective organism a hive I like it this is Mark Malman performing on Sounds Like Home Something greater. I am you are part of me, and we are we. Long ago, once upon a dream was a time before this time before you and me. Now hear me out When I say we are sleep calling out my name between realities wow. we are part of something we are part of something what does it mean what is the deal if nothing is real? If every thought that's ever been thought is just an idea. The mind reels as gravity holds us down from falling. Everything spins. Entropy wins, begins, and ends again and again. I am you. You. Life is the lie, the 
If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home, our virtual showcase of Minnesota music. And that was Mark Malman performing the new song, We Are We. Mark has a new record coming out next month. April 9th is the release date for Happiness. And I'm chatting with Mark right now, which I'm super excited about. I have been listening to the songs that you sent me in advance from this record a lot lately. And uh -huh. it is such a it's a, such a gorgeous record, and it's produced so well, and there's just so many layers to it. I was wondering if you can just tell me about, you know, the basics of when this was recorded. How long have you been working on it? Um, generally, my albums now that I'm older, it used to be I would write the songs, like the, the Tourist, my first album. I write it, record it, but now some of these songs I'll be working on, I'll revisit them in a couple weeks and then th I started the majority of this record with a concept of um, work on it for one hour then go to the next song work on it for one hour go to the next song and I had about 15 beginning pieces and then I just expanded on those before the book tour and after the book tour and then I kept journal notes and I started writing ideas and I I started I, I all of a sudden I realized oh this is a book this is a this is an album <laughs> that's influenced by the book and how the book affected my relationship to happiness. So it's, it's, I decided I would, I would, I had the song happiness already done. And I said, well, let's make a concept out of this. Um, so it's, it's really a lot of journal entries. All my records have been concept oriented in the 2010s they were all theme theme records actually there was only two in the 2010s double silhouette which is a post breakup album like kind of addressing how to process uh the end of love and then the same thing with the end is not the end which is how we process the end of death which i in the book happiness playlist i talk about when the uh person dies they go to the afterlife and the rest of us go to the after death which is a place where we mm. have to process what happens. You know, we're left with a lot of a new world too. And so that was similar to what was happening in Double Silhouette. But for me now, looking back at a record at, after it's finished, it's almost like reading journal entries or diary entries. It is um, my most personal thoughts um, edited and guarded and protected. You know, there's boundaries with this songwriting or you'll be haunted. So, um, mm. yeah, so this record is is called Happiness, but it ends very sad. And what I learned from when I what I experimented with the book was how can we uh, combat uh, anxiety and panic um, and somewhat depression with uh, positive songs, how we use music. We know this to make us feel better. And then I started to think when I toured the book and was reading the book every day, and I was realizing that yeah, that there's a place after that. And the place after that is balance, that we cannot punish ourselves for not being happy all the time. I am not a proponent of this concept of toxic positivity because I think they're, that they both cancel each other out. I'm still working on that idea. But um, so this album for me to me it's almost written to me uh uh, uh, uh about accepting the darkness because there are some really dark points on this record yeah can you say a little bit more about that statement you made about your songwriting needing boundaries so that you don't end up haunted what does that mean yeah it means that um you know, some some songwriters will joke and they'll say, well, I don't have children because my songs are my children. But a song can haunt you. And when I used to write that, uh, I used to write this uh, column for City Pages, Rest in Peace, that was, uh, that was called Gimme Songs and it was about songwriting. And one thing I would ask people um, every time, and sometimes it didn't go in and sometimes it did was, if Kurt Cobain would have wrote a happy song, would he have killed himself? And um, uh, of course, having suicide impacted my life greatly when I lost my mom. So I, I'm curious about, about how to stop that. And what happens, um, you know, in meditation is we, we have a mantra and we repeat this mantra, we repeat this mantra. Or some people might say, you know, this is my slogan in life, a mantra. When you write a song, 
begins, it is a seed. And then you put it on an album and like We Are We, you just played it, I just played it. And then it, it, you make a video for it. And then people want to hear it on tour. So I have a song like uh, We Only Have Each Other in the Night, which I wrote when I was 19. And I've played it, you know, before the pandemic, probably twice a week since then, which is over half of my life. So I had a friend who is a tremendous songwriter who kept writing about negative things. And I feel like, why would you want to get on stage and submit yourself to these hauntings, you know? Um, so I, I, I kind of like write, even when I don't write songs when I'm in a bad mood and I'm in a bad mood a lot. And uh, I, I, I and not a bad mood. There is no, I'm in, when I'm a sad mood, I don't write songs. And so if, if, I'm sorry. And I do, I do that because I don't want that to get in the song. So if I have a sad song, I wrote that when I was in a good mood. Or at least a reflective mood. On this album, there are some songs that are about very painful moments in the last four years and happy moments, but they all came from a point of self-awareness, uh, not from the wounded child, you know, which is a dangerous place That's to so be because, yeah, yeah, you know, because I, I wrote a book, you wrote a book, and and um, you kind of write the book, and it's it's not really done because the book follows you, you know, yeah, it follows you because yeah, so you do interviews, right? No, I'm sorry. Totally. Go ahead. Yeah. It's okay. No, I was just going to say, so like the act of writing a song is almost like you're manifesting how you want to feel about that topic in the future or like how you want your headspace to be when you think about that in the future and perform it and kind of live with it. I think so. It depends on, you know, the person's I mean, manifestation can go as far as kind of flowery as The Secret, which is one of the only books I ever threw in the garbage halfway through. <laughs> but that's just my that's my belief of it. Some people believe the manifestation thing, and that's what works for them, and that's great. Um, but I I've, I see it more on like a blue collar level of um, we have to do knockout on tour. Knockout's in a major key. It's in the key of D major. It's epic, and it feels great to play. And um, so there for three minutes of the day, I feel great. At least I can guarantee three minutes of that day will be awesome because music takes control. It takes the front seat and you, you just kind of submit to the, to the key and the, and the lyric, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I love talking to you, Malman. Well, let's talk <laughs> I love a little bit more too. in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get another song in and then we'll keep this chat going. This is another song from your new record, Fake Gold Silver Chains. Anything you want to tell us about this one? Um, yeah, I <laughs> I I like really the one of the one of the ideas behind this record is like dancing. And what I was just talking about, let your body lead. Uh the put it in the major key and we're in a good mood for at least three minutes. And one thing I, I found writing the happiness playlist is is that the we can control to a point the mind with the body and dancing is so great everybody agrees dancing is is healing and so i i recognize like sometimes a frivolous lyric enables you to kind of get over um and just something to hold the place of words so this is just a song about consumerism and the idea that I, I don't understand why people pay money for expensive jewelry when they can pay a dollar ninety nine for. <laughs> but so that's all, you know, songs about the beat and the bass and the funniness and dipping milkshakes or dipping fries in milkshakes. Oh, I like it. Well, this is Mark <laughs> Malman performing for you here on Sounds Like Home. This is fake old silver chains. Two, three, four. Oh. Oh. Oh, come on, I'm going for a ride. 
If you're just joining us, that was Mark Malman performing another song of the new record, Happiness, that comes out next month. I'm Andrea Swenson chatting with Mark right now about what he's been up to. You know, we've been talking a lot about your work so far, Mark, but I just wanted to check in on a human level as well and find out how the last year has been for you. It's crazy to think that we've now hit a year anniversary of COVID. What's your year been like? Um it's been horrible. It's been terrible. Uh, it's been, um, draining psychologically. It's been a lot of looking in the mirror, uh, for too long psychologically. Um, I can't say that I was able to get the books done that I wanted to, or the movies done that I wanted to. There was just a lot of sleeping and a lot of fear and a lot of dissonance between belief systems of close people, people that I was, you know, very close with that had a different ideology of how this virus should be handled. And unfortunately, that caused um, even more isolation. Uh, I lost people to the virus, one person, and and not close to me, but I did have a, a it's just horrible. It's horrible. And I think sometimes I think, oh, at least I learned something. And I don't think this is going to be the situation where, um, you know, sometimes the law, if the loss doesn't outweigh the lesson, the lesson will not be learned. And I think in this situation, it's just really life, the existential nature of the fact that we're thrown onto this planet by no choice of our own and anything is possible. Uh, sometimes when I speak at music schools, I say that to students. I say, who believes anything is possible? And they all raise their hand and I say, well, what's anything? And they say, record deal, uh, you know, dancing for someone or playing sax in something. And then I say, well, car accidents are also part of anything. So, so is a disease. And so we, ex we kind of must live this we live this false ideology that was taught to us, mistaught to us, I think, when we were born. The American dream is that you can have anything. But in our minds, we keep picturing we can have anything to be, I'm going to be an astronaut or something like this. But I think maybe what we learned is bad things happen. And if if a person goes through COVID and said, oh, it was great. That means they didn't respect the health and safety of others and they did something wrong. If you didn't have a bad time, maybe you should check in with yourself. Mm. <laughs> I... That's a lot of judgy. That's a lot of judgment in there. <laughs> I have been just so um, moved and captivated by your work as a writer over the last few years, not just with your book, but I mean, some days you post a single thought in a tweet that just knocks me over. You have this way of observing 
both the highs and the lows of everything that's going on with us. And I feel like watching you these last few years has been watching you just live with your heart wide open and accept, you know, the the good and the bad and, and really be not to be all Brene Brown, but like vulnerable about your experiences. Um, do you feel like you have gone through, you know, a transition into a new kind of era of your creative expression? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that because I think I'm, it's too close. I, I, um, I, I guess my relationship with Twitter is, um, really organic and, uh, I just, I don't think about it. So I, sometimes someone will say, and I'll be, Oh, I, I tweeted that. So it, it's not, it's not like a book where I'm, I, I just kind of barf out thoughts and, um, I, maybe technology now is allowing people to be more fluid with their minds as we all kind of mind meld. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe for some reason I'm, I'm, I'm able to say things that other people are already thinking. I, I, I don't, um, I don't really know, man. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't really think it's, uh, I appreciate the compliment and that's very nice to hear, but uh, personally, I, I, I'm just putting my thoughts out there. I don't have any real expectations. Uh, and maybe that's it. I, I let, I've let go of expectations and, and I guess in the, since I quit drinking and since I lost my mom, I kind of had to let go of the object identity of what preconceived notion of a rock star is and rock or a rock musician is. I still have the hair and I still have the silver jacket and the chain, but it's 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 residual, I think. Um, it's a costume more than an identity now. Uh, I, I've let go mm. of this, um, you know, this idea that you need to wear a certain shirt in order to be treated and respected by, um, by a critic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been so wonderful seeing you and talking to you. Thank you so much for participating in this. And I'm so excited for people to hear your new record. Like I said, I've been listening to it a bunch and it's just, there's so many different layers to it. And it's one that I know that people want to return to and spend time with. So keep an eye out. Mark Melman's Happiness Hits on April 9th. And we're yeah. going to close with one more song, Tell It to the Judge. Is there anything you want to tell us about this one? Yeah, this is another one of those songs that's been following me forever. I wrote it when I was 18, maybe. And at that, and I was writing a lot. I started writing pop songs when I was 10. And um, I, I had found that a good tool for me, since I didn't have access to a lot of experience in life, was I would watch a movie and I would stop it halfway. And I would sing from the perspective of the person, uh, main character. And this movie was The Deer Hunter, starring Christopher Walken. And I stopped that movie. It was, it was on VHS, so it was two tapes, because it's long. So I finished the first tape, and I stopped, and I went to the piano, and I wrote a version of this song. It was called Skull Queen at the time. And then we started playing it over and over and over. And I um, it eventually ended up on, an L, on the live album under the name Butcher's Ballad, because around that time in my life, there was a somebody who worked at a butcher shop in the neighborhood would walk home from work in their butcher thing. But when we were kids, it was scary because there's like a butcher walking down the street and there was a cemetery, I think once, and we saw that and we, so I, I wrote, I, I wrote, put that as the title, but then it ended up on 2006's uh, Between the Devil and Middle Sea as Tell It to the Judge. I'm, I, um, I love playing this song live uh, and, um, I'm, I'm excited playing it now. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. It was so great to talk to you. This is it's Mark Malman performing for you here on Sounds Like Home. When you were staying out and painting Said the captain as the ship went down You were the kind of people that I couldn't stand to be around You 
put his hat back on his head and then began to drown. And as the ship was sinking, the cabbie started thinking about his passengers as people with their hearts between their knees. And how he never thought he'd see the day when they'd sink away and never be seen. Now there's a devil on the old docks with sunshine on his face as a working class sleeps in on the holiday. And we watch another new year as it slides down the drain. Easter comes and Christmas goes And the seasons change with the TV shows Like you change your mind, like you change your clothes Like somebody telling somebody something Something somebody already knows mm-hmm. Not everything is possible Not everything is wonderful Not everybody says quite what they mean And the years pass by as we try and we try To justify this indecent routine oh. And you pray you live forever And you pray you'll never die let a day slip by and pigs are gonna fly I met a kid in the city and his clothes were long and pretty And he claimed to be a stationary guy He said the reason that we're living here is sad But it's true, it's that some people are gonna get punished for the things they never do And God keeps grinning in the world, keeps spinning in the snow, buddy There's gold in the temple and I'm gonna find some sweet archangel and free my mind. I've been living out core and I only want more. My hand is steady and I'm gonna score. I don't wanna slip on the rug. I don't wanna pull the plug. I gotta keep moving so I don't get stuck. And it was just about 7.30 this morning. I saw a rabbit get run over by a sedan. And he shaked and he shaked and he shivered until he got run over again. You see the reason that we're living here sad but true It's that some people are gonna get punished for things they never do And there's nobody who's completely clean Just that you and I stay me And God keeps grinning and the world keeps spinning 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 God keeps grinning grinning, but he's never coming down here no way, never coming down this terrible place called here. Somebody out there, somebody hear me, somebody love me, somebody hold me, somebody, 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 somebody out there, somebody heal me, somebody save me, somebody, somebody, oh, my man, you're so funny, oh. You're so weird. It's funny that you say that. You say it more than once. Can't you even see that? It's just the trauma response. Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Hello, thanks so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. This is the Currents Virtual Festival showcasing Minnesota music. This is our seventh installment. It's a project that we started during the pandemic to stay connected to local artists. I'm Andrea Swenson. You can usually find me hosting the local show over on Sunday nights on the current 6 to 8 p.m. I am so excited right now to be connecting with Blood Smoke Body. This is a somewhat new project that is uh, some familiar faces that you will recognize from the group Nazim and Spencer Joels, but they have a new name and a new record that came out last summer. How is it going, you guys? It's going fantastic besides COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. There is that. Well, I am so excited to be connecting with you. We'll get into talking about the record and releasing it during the pandemic, which is a very interesting conversation and um, all that good stuff about what you've been up to. But let's start with some music. And I was wondering if you could maybe start by introducing who we're going to be seeing performing with you in these videos today. So on the drums, we have a good friend, Ghosty, playing. We have our friend, Will Lindstrom, playing on the lead guitar, Josh Johnson on the saxophone. And a new friend, Jalen Spencer, uh, also known as Sir Spencer, on the bass. Yeah. All right. Um, and you're going to start with Black people. Velvet, which Correct. is one of my favorite songs on the record. Uh, what can you tell us about this song in particular? Black Velvet is kind of like, we're like drawing from stories uh, from, from a time where we were a little more reckless, you know what I mean? The Black Velvet days, basically. Yeah. It's, it's like reminiscing on our, on our, on our youth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, 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 and saying goodbye to, to those times, like in a, in a fond way, you know, even though they might've been, uh, a little destructive, but <laughs> kind of looking back on that fondly and, and letting go. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, this is Blood Smoke Body and Friends performing on Sounds Like Home. Well, I'm in all the drugs. I'm never too stone rose. All on my tongue. I left my shoes off wayside, baby. I sleep in the daylight. Then go on and on and on. No need to watch for the signs. I live by. About this, you ain't too young about this. You ain't grow up about this. Won't make it about this. You should make dope about this just to get dope about this. Rap this, I wrote about this. You ain't got no option. Stay pen, lay man, break man. Hey man, say man. I remember back when, remember when we stole Jamal Uncle Lee, Cody prescription for Crohn's disease. Sipping it, we mixed it with Monster Energy. Got there, the silly shit we did when we was teens. Then we had to set up. Cause he snitched, came away with a grip of molly off the lick Kinda think about it first time that I did Traded that shit for a seven and a pip Actually some purple, but really it would mean Addictions that hurt you, just save it, don't spin Knocking on the industry, no, let us in Talking at the college, you should not let us in Position that I'm in, got me smiling, I grin Head off the biz, let my locks hit the wind If I got a problem, got the guap, I can spin Not really a thing to put them knots on your brim Hit him with the act up, back up, get your stack up Mix it with tobacco, pack up in the back well, I remember back, wait Back memory that good, take him down memory driving and just your fire hood. Gonna let the Alpine play, bump it old shit from NWA. But we do this shit the MSP way, bump it old Bobby Raps getting thrown all day. Yeah, I've been selling zones all day, but you know the Twin Cities it might snow all day. Woo! Thunder in the rain I'm only 
makes you yesterday stay but you you walked away more or less remain somewhere in the warmer parts of my brain bless my body If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home. That was Blood Smoke Body performing the song Black Velvet. And I am chatting right now with Nazim, Spencer, and Liban from the group. And I am just so excited to find out more about kind of this reboot of your project, which started as Nazim and Spencer Joel's and making this record. What can you tell us about forming this new group, Blood Smoke Body? Um. I think it's a bit of like a, a, a spiritual transition and and um, a bit of like a brand philosophy change where it's kind of less about, um, I think, proving ourselves as like a, a name and, and more about creating a, a movement. Mm -hmm. And I, I think having like a, a name is a little more enigmatic in, in, in that realm. Mm -hmm. Some people can uh, relate to. I mean, you got the best rundown of what it really means. Blood, yeah, blood smoke <laughs> body is like it's like it's the elements of life. You know what I mean? The blood is the people, the the the, the history, the smoke is the leisure, the things we do for fun. You know what I mean? Whether it be partying, dancing, drinking, and stuff like that. The body is the earth we all share. Blood smoke body is mm -hmm. like the sun, moon, stars, earth, wind, fire, yeah. the holy trinity. Yeah, it is everything that is. <laughs> Holy Trinity, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me about bringing Levon into the mix. Has he always been kind of a peripheral member of this group, or is that a new development? Oh yeah, most most definitely. You know, and uh, he's our DJ, and he but he's also getting into musical exploits of his own. <laughs> he's, he's starting to, to rap. I don't know if you heard the Somali homie song with Muja Messiah. That was uh, that was his first first foray in, in, in the rap and he's working on a, his his own album now with, with our, our, our friend Francis Brown. Pocket chicken. Yeah. Yeah, Lebron basically, he's just always been around and yeah. holding the camera and anything, basically anything yeah. we needed, but uh, yeah. we needed a DJ, so. Yeah, exactly, so it, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, we really just always been functioning as like a, a, a team and like a, like a small family for like the past like seven years. Yeah, it's been kind of like a, a, a long, strange journey and a lot of a lot of growing and, and, and experimenting and, and uh, you know, experiencing our, 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 our city in, in, in many ways and kind of coming out of that and, and maturing and also like, you know, developing some some business skills as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, we done we done slept on each of our mother's floors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I definitely hear some maturing on the record. It's a more maybe pensive sounding record than yeah. your previous work. I mean, how would you describe the sound of of your debut record as Blood Smoke Body? Um, I, I'd say it, it, it's a, kind of an amalgamation of, of genres and definitely very uh, reflective, uh, sensitive and, and vulnerable. As I think something we want to go for, you know, uh, drawing from some of our other influences that like maybe people might not expect that we would have, like um, like Alabama Shakes and Joni Mitchell, uh, it's like Stevie Wonder stuff like that, you know, and then and then mixing that kind of with some things that just kind of came out of pure experimentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of vibes, a lot of emotions, and yeah. just reflecting on emotions. That's like a major thing on the album, I feel like. Yeah. yeah definitely. It seems definitely. very um, timely. It, I just feel like this last year has been such a reflective time for so many people as we're isolated and really thinking more deeply about our lives and, and choices that we made and things like that. And it just seems like yeah. it fits so well into this time. But I was surprised to hear it, it had actually been all recorded and finished well before the pandemic, right? Yeah. 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 It had been, it had been something we've been working on for probably like two and a half years. And it was like complete at one point. 
and then and then we completely remade it and we were actually going to put it out wait wait till like <laughs> after the pandemic to put it out but then like <laughs> we were just we were just like you know might as well put it out right now and it's kind of i think perfect timing uh because I, I think as like the the for the process of listening to it it's definitely something that i would imagine is best done I mean, you're just like sitting in your room in your living room with headphones like in a, in a reflective mood or maybe a long car drive or something like that mm -hmm. i can attest that both of those settings apply to this record very well i've, I've experienced it in both of those settings <laughs> nice <laughs> Well, let's hear some more music and then we'll chat a little bit more. This is a song that you've released a video for, 1111. What can you tell us about this one? Yeah, we recently released a video for this directed by um, Niani. His, Niani. That's my twin. His twin, mm -hmm. our, our spiritual sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a song kind of, I think, um, a, a, about fleeting romance mm -hmm. that, so, that bittersweet sensation of a one night stand yeah <laughs> and uh <laughs> yeah and, and how it you know like the it's not necessarily like something just like a, an, an empty interaction you know sometimes there could be like bittersweet deep emotional feelings like intertwined in it and and this is kind of a cool rendition because it's like uh we we change it a little bit to uh to suit better suit a full band setting so mm -hmm. I, I think y'all really appreciate it very cool can't wait to hear it well this is blood smoke body performing for you here on sounds like home She's so sweet. Was it all worth it? I find it so pensive. I think wrote a letter so sweet. Wrote it in cursive. I woke up like, why did I drink? Why do we drink so much? We don't deserve it. I walk you to your car. You go to work. I go to sell this dog. I made a point to hold you long before we said goodbye. Oh, you slow.
don't even know me The way you're dressing and gesture is so sweet These blessings on blessings on blessings don't hold me to it This is Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, connected right now with Blood Smoke Body. That was a performance of the song 1111. And we were chatting a little bit earlier about how this is uh, maybe a more reflective, personal, vulnerable sounding record. And I really appreciated your willingness to go there with your experiences with substance use and really reflecting on your life and, and the choices that you've made. And especially now, you know, this last year has been so stressful to be so open about your experiences is, is a really powerful thing. I'm just wondering, you know, what has that process been like for you of opening up in this way and what kind of response have you gotten from your fans? Uh, it's a very visceral process. You know, it's not, it's not just like going to work and, um, you know, using all the knowledge and tools you have to just make some songs, which is how it is sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I, I guess for me, at least, and I'm sure for you, because like you write some crazy deep lyrics, it's, it's, uh, it, it's kind of getting, diving into the essence of, of what life is and, and um, trying to make sense of all the pieces uh that that you're given you know and and it, a lot of it can be confusing and the process of making art making music can uh, be a way to consolidate those feelings and, and curiosities and, and into something that might be a, not necessarily a, a direct answer but a bit of a a, a conclusion definitely yeah i feel like making a lot of these songs was kind of like felt like we were leaving parts of us in the past by bringing the past out of us. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah, no, high key. Uh, definitely like an upheaval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have you had conversations with listeners about their reactions to this kind of storytelling? Yeah, I mean, um, people, people, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Some people have said that they like cried people listening cried, to this yeah. stuff, you know, which is like, you know, which is cool. Like not in like a sadistic way, but like, <laughs> you know, just like knowing that it's like uh, been able to to hit people on that that deep of a level, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, people. There, there's been people that have reached out and just to, like said that they've appreciated how you know, I guess, like open we were on those records. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it too. So thank you. Yeah, it's thanks, been Andrew. a wonderful soundtrack <laughs> to this very, very strange and, and overwhelming time, but I just find myself returning to this record. I just put 1111 on a, a new uh, spring 2021 mood playlist for myself <laughs> so next to Joni Mitchell, because I saw that you had mentioned her and they, they fit yeah. together very well. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, well, this has been so great to chat with you today. Thank you so much for joining us for Sounds Like Home. Thanks for putting a band together to record these amazing performances for us. Um, we're going to close with another one of my personal favorites from the record, another really per personal song, Sabotage. Is there anything you want to leave us with about this song? Sabotage is, is all true. Yeah. <laughs> it's all true. All, true, all true, stories, all true stories, all true emotions, yeah. real breakups. Yeah real stuff yeah the the the, the right. ultimate breakup song <laughs> <laughs> it's real well yeah. thank you and again for being here <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you so much for being here this is blood smoke body on sounds like home get it one two one two three four i
What's the use? What's the use? What's the use of thinking? When there's no conclusion about these illusions, oh, I stand in They said that girls leave niggas mentally Before physically a they call entropy The inevitable decline but where your sympathy I'm crying in symphony, clinging to memories Left a long time ago, no fighting at five in the mo You probably got assignments to finish, I'm hitting the road They kinda let it bite back, no I shouldn't like that Like that, where that good advice at? Stressing this and that, never chat But we jack, make up, make love from the back, take a nap See I ain't too good at hiding my feelings I have my clothes at this girl house My sister and my bros told me it would go south So I'm dancing with Molly at a show right now Sipping liquor, looking for some hoes right now And I cannot find my phone right now Soon as I pick it up, she hit piss, but I been cut She could throw it back like a flea flick Butterfly effect, night to the heart nauseous She could see us kept ass, for the love lost it Could have been the best, could have been more cautious More or less, we gon' need some rest, I'm exhausted But I'ma let her cold black heart go The temperature is marble where my lighter at? I mean a hot dog is hopping with my favorite color purple I can't tell you where my mind is at I'm headed nowhere fast with a half full flash Can't never get the time back She had eyes like sapphire, five five rim Same size as the waistline Hearts break to the baseline What a time, people breaking up over FaceTime Myself, I do it to you, to you. Blood smoke body. Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on The Current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.
Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, host of The Local Show, and I'm connected right now to Paul Metza, who you can usually find in the Twin Cities. He's from the Iron Range, and right now he's joining us from Florida. So we're going to see some beautiful background with Paul as we have a little chat before we see his performances. How are you doing, Paul? Very good. I'm with my best friend of all time, who's also from the Iron Range. He's lived in Florida for years. And it's a beautiful little cabana with a little pool and a, an amazing sound system. And he has, over the last 20 years, uh, burned his 21,000 LPs to a server. So he's the DJ and I'm the guest. And uh, it's a history lesson and a damn good hang. Wow, that sounds like a dream, honestly. <laughs> yeah, he's a... He's a musician himself, but a real uh, music historian. His name's Kelly Hodgkiss, and his lovely wife, Mary, has been putting up with us now for two days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks for taking the time out to chat with us and for recording some performances for us for Sounds Like Home. So we're going to start with some music, and then we'll chat a little bit more about how you've been doing. Sure. Um, you wanted to start with the song Virginia. Do you want to say anything to set that one up? That was... Uh, one of the first songs I recorded on my debut album, Paper Tigers in 1984. I believe it's the uh, first track on the record. And it's, I took the title from my hometown, uh, Virginia, Minnesota, which is the queen city of the Iron Range, I might add. And because there was a queen Virginia from somewhere at some point, that's how they named it. But, uh, but it's also kind of about this imaginary woman, Virginia. So it has some geographic place marks in the song for the town of Virginia, the five ball light and the train trestle. People have gone through, people who listen to my music and fans of mine have gone through Virginia and have located some of these things. And then they get a hold of me and said, oh yeah, we saw the five ball lights, we saw the trestle. And so that's kind of fun. So this is, uh, uh, I just recorded this uh, with my buddy Rob Hillstrom at his studio in St. Paul called Break Spot Recording. So, uh, that's the song that we'll be hearing and watching. Very cool. This is Paul Metza playing on Sounds Like Home. Down all the trees on Fifth Avenue Shout out the fireball light Nobody's on the beat going two by two Nighthawk's not running in the night Black trust is broke, but the train tracks they still go on town Plug nickel accordion band Kissing boys, kissing girls right down on the Hooter Road Jack Rabbit kick the can. Jack Rabbit kick the can. Virginia, Virginia. Don't even know my name. Virginia, Virginia. Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same. Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same. Drops, ropes for the meter man Pool how police play mumbly pig Horseshoe hopes Loan from the bleeding hand Force goes later just like Lincoln said Boris the Jippo used to tell me Russian fairy tales In a black wood sky no satellite A fire priest keeps the photos down beneath the Chippendale no one's gonna sing to sleep at night No one's gonna sing to sleep at night Virginia, Virginia Don't even know my name Virginia, Virginia Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same Thank you. 
Jimmy saxophone, Southside pinball, mercy please. Under the pines, my baby said, let's pretend it's Paris. She dropped me down on my knees. Old dogs, they lie right behind broken door waves. Mandolin bones and candlelight. Last chance wind blows cold, sometimes from four waves. No one's gonna sing you to sleep at night. No one's gonna sing you to sleep at night. Virginia, Virginia. Don't even know my name. Virginia, Virginia. Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same. Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same. Nothing changes, but you do not feel the same. If you're just joining us, this is Sounds Like Home. I'm Andrea Swenson, and that was Paul Metza performing Virginia, something from his debut album that came out back in 1984. Paul, you have been performing for decades now, and you've gotten a chance to share stages with so many historic figures in the community. You're a historic person yourself and a historian yourself. And I wanted to ask you, um, you know, we unfortunately learned of the sad passing of uh, Peter Ostrushko recently. And I was wondering, you know, I know you had a chance to interview him. Yeah. I was wondering if, you know, you had any memories you wanted to share or stories that come to mind as, as we've all been remembering his huge impact here in Minnesota. Well, I uh, was honored to have Peter play on my, that album, uh, the Virginia from Paper Tigers. He played on a song called Stars Over the Prairie, and he played fiddle and mandolin. And then a lot of people don't realize because he didn't, he sang a lot more when he was kind of getting going on the West Bank with Dakota Dave Hall and Becky Thompson and people like Jim Tordoff. But then over the years, he was known more as an instrumentalist, probably the greatest virtu virtuoso that's ever come out of Minnesota. And uh, so, I had heard him sing and I loved his voice. I said, Peter, could you, uh, could you put a harmony on that? And he went into the studio, one take, like all of his instrumental takes, uh, and put this beautiful low harmony on it. So if you go, um, I have a video on YouTube called Stars of the Prayer. You can also track down the song from the record, but that will be Peter Ostrushko playing fiddle and mandolin and singing. Uh, I really got to, you know, I knew Peter over the years because I came of age kind of in the West Bank music scene. In fact, Peter Ostrushko was working on a series of podcasts that are amazing. And in his first or second, he talked about just him walking down from his apartment on Cedar Avenue and going to the New Riverside. And then what was really interesting, he said, yeah, I turned around and then I saw the mayor of the West Bank, Willie Murphy. Of course, we lost a couple of years ago, but the way he described so great. And then he says, we went to the uh, uh, to the Triangle Bar and there was Colonel Rain Gover, the gods of the West Bank. And the way he described it was the way I would describe it if I was him walking down those, strange, those, those same avenues, which I have hundreds of times. But to see Willie Murphy and Colonel Rain Glover, and of course, uh, you know, we lost. Uh, Dave Rain, 2001, who was a very good friend of mine, harmonica uh, player, Tony Glover. So now to lose Peter and and the others we've lost, like Bill Hinckley and Dean Carr and so many others, Will Donick. Um, I was reminded, number one, when Peter passed, what a great scene I came into from the Iron Range to be able to listen to all these musicians at the New Riverside and the Cafe X Stamp. And then also after the gigs, you'd end up drinking with them at the 400 bar or the uh, <laughs> Palmers. So yeah, missing Peter, it was very heartbreaking. I, I tell people we actually lost him twice. 
we lost him three years ago when he had his stroke and we knew he was never going to play again. Um, and then we lost him to the heavens uh, on February 24th. But a huge loss. I was honored to know him. He was a man of very few words, but when he spoke, everybody listened. Mm, you know, he'd call well his solos conversations with God. And that's how seriously he took his music. And uh, it was easy sitting in the same room listening to him play to know that he took, it was that deep of a, a journey for him. Mm, that's so beautiful. Well, I know that you've had a chance to interview so many of these musicians that you've come up around and, and gotten to play with too on your radio show, TV show that we can watch online as well. And, and on, uh, tell us when, when we can tune in to watch your interview program. You can get uh, the Wall of Power Radio Hour every six o'clock on Saturday night. I've been on the air for seven years on AM 950 uh, on your radio dial in the Twin Cities or stream at am950radio.com. In fact, uh, we just had two tributes to Peter Ostrushko featuring several of his friends that you can go to the uh, AM 950 radio podcast, find Wall of Power Radio, and track down the podcast. And then uh, we had a very well-known woman around town who has done quite a bit for the music scene that we had played for last week. And I think the next show would air on uh, March, tw uh, March 20th, a woman by the name of Andrea Swenson. <laughs> and we had two great episodes with Andrea uh, talking about her great book, Something About It Here. What, what's the exact name? <laughs> got to be something here. It's got to be something here. What a wonderful book. And of course, why I loved it so much <laughs> is you really had a lot of nice back history on my one of my dearest friends who we lost, you know, two years ago uh, or a year and a half ago, Mr. Willie Walker. Yeah. Oh, that was another heartbreaker. Yeah, it's been a tough handful of years for anybody that loved music. And not only the Twin Cities music community, but just, you know, the music community overall. I mean, John Prine, Jerry Jeff Walker, Billy Joe Shaver, uh, the list, you know, Ellis Marcellus, the, the list goes on and on. That's why you have to listen to the radio shows like your own my own and go out hopefully when things open up and go and see these musicians play and don't hesitate to pay a cover charge and put money in the tip jar because all these musicians that we know and love have not a work for a year you know they do their live well, streams and that's not yeah. like a paying gig so that's my advice right. to the audience <laughs> i love it well, I want to ask you about reissuing um, this record that just came out recently, but I want to hear some music first, and then we'll chat a little sure. bit more. So the next performance is Honeymoon in Drag Alley. Do you want to set this one up? I was in New York City in Greenwich Village on the night of the uh, Halloween parade. And if you've ever been in Greenwich Village, there's a Halloween parade. The boys love to dress up and the girls too, but the boys take it to the next level. And so I was sitting down after doing a little bar hopping and I was getting ready to go out to Rigo Park where I was living with my friend, Jerry Disrude. And uh, I got on the train and all these revelers from Halloween night came in and it was like entering visually the seventh level of Dante's Inferno in a good and positive way. <laughs> but uh, so Drag Alley, I believe it's my friend Kelly's here. What was the Drag Alley? Was that uh, a William Burroughs line? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was Drag Alley was uh, a William Burroughs line. So uh, Bowman just came to me, Honeymoon and Drag Alley. I went home, grabbed my guitar. It was one of those songs I wrote in about 15 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. This is Paul Metza performing for you on Sounds Like Home. <laughs> Thank you. 
Honeymoon and Drag Alley. Watch how you get your kicks. For your lover's secret handshake might be a high five of a witch. And you think you found your true love till you realize the switch. It's just Drag Alley's bag of tricks. It's just Drag Alley's bag of tricks. The last scene in Drag Alley is walking on the wire. Even church mice change denominations, fallen angels are for hire. And you think you found your true love? Run out of gas and blew a tire. Sang the Hellcats in the choir. Sang the Hellcats in the choir. Love's gonna come around. First goes up, then it's gonna go right down. Love is like a Ferris wheel. Goes round and round, how does it feel? Love is like a hurricane. Comes through town, brings driving rain. Driving rain. Driving rain. That is Paul Metza performing for you here on Sounds Like Home. And I'm connected right now to Paul, who is currently in Florida, enjoying some beautiful weather and some palm trees waving in the background. And Paul, we've been talking a little bit uh, today about how you have met and interviewed and worked alongside so many incredible people. And you've documented your life so beautifully in your first book. And Thank I you. believe you might be working on some more. What can you tell us about the writing that you've been doing lately? I, uh, about a year ago, I was going to put out a book of just po poetry. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a, the title Alphabet Jazz. And as I was going through my uh, archives and, and uh, scrapbooks and desk drawers, uh, I found a variety of poems and prose, original song lyrics, written on typing paper, back of my electric bill, my phone bill, air sickness, air sickness bags if I was flying. So I put them all together and I thought, you know what? Why not uh, include some pros? I've gotten several pieces published in like Min Post, the Star Tribune, several musician obits, uh, which oddly enough is kind of a specialty of mine because I, I love to remember my fallen musicians. So I put them together, I've got about 25 poems, about 25 pieces of prose. And then I'm going to kind of put about 10 song lyrics in there. It's kind of palate cleanses between the prose and the poetry. Um, so I've got about one piece to finish, and then I'm going to just kind of spell check, do some editing along with my friend Kelly. Uh, and when I get done, I'm going to send it off. I have a woman who's uh, doing the design. It's going to be self-published and hopefully it will be out by the end of May. Now, 
after 20 years, I'm leaving Northeast Minneapolis and I'm moving to Duluth, which has been a lifelong oh. dream of mine. So this book started out to be a book of poetry. In a way, it's kind of turning out to be my love letter to Minneapolis. Um, so I'm excited to put it out, uh, excited to make the move. And um, yeah, it's even though in the pandemic, there's been no place to play live, I've managed to be getting a lot of stuff done uh, that doesn't involve live performance. Yeah. Wow. Well, I can't wait to read that. That sounds amazing. You'll enjoy it. Well, you'll, another... remember, you'll know some oh, of the good. people. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, another project of yours recently was doing this reissue of a record that you put out back in 1992, Whistling Past the Graveyard. What made you want to revisit that particular set of recordings? There was a couple of reasons. Number one, it's probably my uh, most beloved record of mine. It was produced by a fellow named Bucky Baxter who passed last May. So it was kind of a tribute to him. Bucky was in town in 92 playing with Bob Dylan. He was a pedal steel player and mandolin player and recorded a couple of records with Bob. But he just started playing with him. He was doing five nights at the Orpheum on his night off. He asked a cab driver to take him to the best music in Minneapolis. God bless whoever this cab driver was. He took him to my Tuesday night gig at the Five Corners, which I did 237 Tuesdays in a row. So he caught a set, came up to me in the break, said, hey, I own a studio in Nashville with, uh, with the great Gary Talent, Springsteen's bass player. And he said, we'll give you a really good deal on a demo tape. Uh, so I went down there a couple weeks later. This is like middle of September now, 92. I did four songs. They, they came out so well, I came back to Minneapolis to a couple of friends of mine that were kind of uh, lending me the money to make the record. So I ended up going back down in October to seven more songs. So we have 11 songs. Several of the songs on there were very politically oriented. Uh, one that I actually wrote for the P9 strike in 1984 that I added a new verse to. Someday those in Congress will have to swallow a bitter pill. They believe Clarence Thomas, but I believe Anita Hill. I wrote that in the early 90s. And uh, so really I thought the songs on that record, three or four of those, were more politically in tune with the times in the year 2020 than they were in 1992, because 1992, it was the Clinton era. Everybody was uh, fat and sassy. Nobody was really complaining about anything. Well, we know in the last four years of that changed. So there's songs that I think really resonated with the times. Uh, so the, the tunes were very, very radio ready, probably the most studio polished record I've ever done. And then I had several a bonus tracks, one that I wrote at the beginning of the pandemic said, uh, you can't be brave if you're not scared. And then I took a new version of Slow Justice, Slow Justice 2020, um, that I include a line about what was going on uh, in Minneapolis with in the aftermath of the George Floyd murder. And what was really fun, I did it over the high school from the recording arts with Scott Harold of Rock the Cause Records. And I enlisted two young rappers Dante Jones and uh, uh, and Little Royal Smith. And I said, I told all these kids, there are a majority of African-American kids, like 17 to 20, I said, take the song and hip hop the hell out of it, see what you come up with. And they came up with this great hip hop version of the song. And for the radio station, they have been playing, it's been a very popular song that's getting uh, quite a bit of notoriety, which which is is really great. It's you know who would have thought a white Iron Range folk singer in the '60s would make his next career move going hip hop? That's what I just did. Could have been that wild Finnish rebel blood line that I'm a part of. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Um, well, you're going to play the title track to close out today. Before we say goodbye, I have a request for your next book. Can you please narrate an audio book? I love listening to you tell stories. I think that would be wonderful. That's a deal, Andrea. I will do that. 
And uh, I appreciate you saying that. And I want to thank you for all your work, all your writing, and your support of the local uh, music community. It's such a, we have such an interlocking uh, ecosystem musically between the clubs and the musicians and the writers and the radio stations. It's what makes the Twin Cities what I consider the greatest musical community in America. And I'm talking about you, Austin, Texas, which I love, Austin. But we've got as much going on as that city. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> oh, well, so thank, thank you, you so very much, much Andrea. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much for participating in Sounds Like Home, and we'll see you around. For sure, Andrea. Take care of yourself, and I hope your baby's doing well. Yeah. 
light Go around the world in 80 days At the speed of light Cause everything that has been given to you Will one day be taken back When you whistle past the graveyard And the graveyard whistles back Thanks for tuning in to Sounds Like Home, a virtual festival celebrating Minnesota music. Sounds Like Home and the artists performing during the festival is sponsored by Gardner Builders and made possible by Minnesota Legacy Amendment and you. Your support keeps the current strong and makes sure that independent music and the emerging artists featured today always have a home on the current. All Sounds Like Home sessions will be archived at thecurrent.org because great music lives here.